Come with me to a place of wondrous contradictions. A place that is silent and unstirring, yet restless and alive. A place of untold peace and boundless dread. Come with me into the very cradle of darkness, where those who dwell, dwell alone. A lawyer, a housewife, a dancer. There is a collective strength among these souls, the kind of strength that comes from a shared experience, the loss of a loved one. Deborah Hodges married her childhood sweetheart, Steve. The day of their daughter Jessica's 10th birthday, he was struck down by a massive heart attack. No one ever saw it coming, no one ever does. There was so much I didn't know. I mean, so many things I took for granted. The bank accounts, the bills. Sometimes you don't realize just how much you rely on someone until they're not there anymore. But we are making it. <laughs> Jesse and I, we've still got each other. Just as soon as we get you bundled up, it's cold outside. I, uh, I noticed you always use two sugars. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, Ed Rado. Deborah Hodges. Oh, I know. I've been listening to you ever since I started coming. Well, I, I don't speak up much. I guess I'm still a little shaky. It takes time, Ed. So they tell me. But what you said tonight, Touch me deeply. That's uh, Linda and Andy. You're the first person I've shown it to since. Uh... Do you mind telling me how it happened? Well, that's why we're here, right? To talk about it. Andy was in the front of the house playing catch with a friend. He went after the ball into the street. And Linda was watching from her garden, as always. Suddenly, this car came from out of nowhere. Well, she was killed instantly, saving our boy. Andy passed away the following winter. Doctor said it was pneumonia, but I'm convinced he died of a broken heart. I know what that feels like. We are. And a good thing, too. I'm starving. I hope you have something in your kitchen. Hey, woman. It's not my kitchen anymore. Oh, great. What have I gotten myself into? Uh, marriage? You've gotten yourself into a marriage. <laughs> mm. Say, Jess, after we get this stuff inside, what say you, me, and your mom head over to the recreation center? You can meet some of the kids you'll be going to school with. And wait until you see the pool. I don't know how to swim. Oh, well then I'll teach you. Mommy, when are we going home? Honey, we talked about this. Our home is here now with Ed. You're gonna have your own room, Jess. We got it ready for you and everything. Yeah. Oh my God, Ed, it's beautiful. You don't think it's too much? No, it's perfect. <laughs> what do you say, Jess? Isn't it great? It's not mine. Well, sure it is, Jess. Every inch of it. I guess we should start bringing in some of that stuff. It'll be dark soon. Ed went to a lot of trouble to get this room ready for you, Jesse. You hurt his feelings. I didn't mean to. Sweetheart, I know you still miss your daddy. I miss him too, but Ed is really trying to make things better for both of us. And now you must try as well. Will you do that, Jesse? 
promise? I promise. What day? If I had to move one more box. Well, at least dinner was great. <laughs> you make a mean macaroni and cheese. <laughs> <laughs> I knew there was a reason I married you. Oh. Ed, I hope what Jesse said didn't hurt you. I understand how she feels. That's how it was with Andy after Linda died. He became withdrawn, hard to reach, and he didn't have some stranger trying to muscle You're in on his life. You're not a stranger, Ed. She needs time to adjust, that's all. You know, maybe redoing that room was too much. No, it was very sweet of you. I still can't believe you went to all that trouble. <laughs> it took a lot of paint. Andy's old wallpaper kept showing through. <laughs> you mean that's Andy's room? It was. Once. treat your new home. Get, get these things picked up. We are not going to let this room turn into a disaster area our first week here. These aren't yours. Where did they come from? They're Andy's. Jessica, Ann, you know better than to play with things that don't belong to you. I wasn't. I didn't. No, Deborah, it's fine. Andy would have liked Jessica to have them. He always wanted a little sister. You take whatever you want, honey. Except for this. Linda gave it to him on his fourth birthday. Besides, it wouldn't be any fun to play with. It's broken. like a good girl and come down to breakfast. Sweetie, help me put these things away. I can't. Excuse me? He doesn't want me here. Honey, of course he does. Why do you think Ed made that beautiful room for you, hmm? It's Sandy's room. I can't sleep there. He won't let me. I just don't want her getting used to the idea of sleeping down here. Oh, let's be patient with her, honey. She'll come around.
It's okay. It's all. It's okay. It's okay. It, it, <sighs> Remember that promise you made me about trying to make things work? I think you could try a little harder. That's why I want you to sleep in your own room tonight. No, Honey, no. I know how hard this is on you. A new neighborhood, a new house, but there's nothing to be afraid of. You're safe here. No, he doesn't want me in his house. Jesse, you know that's not true. Ed wants both of us here. No, not him. Andy. Andy? He's mad at me. He doesn't want me to take his place. Oh, baby, you're not taking Andy's place. Just like nobody could take your place. Andy wants me to leave. Jesse, that's enough. It's true, Mommy. He told me. D stop this now. And don't you dare mention this to Ed. Do you hear me? You're talking about the child he lost. You care more about him than me. That's enough. I don't want to hear any more about it. Is that clear? Ed and I are going out tonight. The babysitter should be here soon. You may invite her to play in your room. That's right, your room. It's time you got used to the idea. The number for the restaurant is on the refrigerator, and if she gets hungry, just heat up the leftover casserole in the fridge, okay? No problem, Mrs. Rideau. We'll be back by midnight, Brenda. Take good care of her. She's had a hard time adjusting. Don't worry, Mr. Rado. Jesse and I will have lots of fun. Richie, they just left. How soon can you be over? Andy? Andy, I'm sorry. I know you don't want me here. And I don't want to be here, but they're making me. It's not my fault. <laughs> sense. It was boiling hot in the attic, but she's frozen stiff. Well, that damn babysitter. How could she let her run around like that? I always keep that attic door locked. She's feverish. I hope I unpacked her medicine. Oh, I'm sure I've got some. No, she's got to have children's. Regular's too strong for Would you check in her bathroom? I think it might be in her medicine cabinet. Cold. It's so cold. Just lie still. He was sorry. He said he didn't mean to hurt his mommy. You find it, Ed? 
No. Must still be packed away. You sure you don't want me to go? No, I can get it faster. I know what to get for it. Just watch Jesse for me. I'll do that. He's dead! Don't lie to me. I'm not lying. I thought he was mad at me. Thought he wanted me to leave. But I was wrong. He was trying to warn me. To save me. Save you? From what? You locked him in there. He screamed for you. It was cold. But you wouldn't let him out! He killed his mother! He didn't mean to. Oh, he killed her, all right. So I punished him. Just like you need to be punished. to go now. Bye, Andy. The grave is not always silent. If we listen, we can sometimes hear the dead speaking to us. We must listen closely with an open mind and an open heart, for what may at first sound like a threat may in fact be a message. <laughs> 